The sun has been a significant area of strength for us, especially of late, and it will go through a basic, moreover fascinating change, the inversion of its enchanting field. This connection occurs generally at standard spans, meaning the midpoint of the sun-powered cycle. Also, it has broad repercussions for us here on Earth. In all honesty, the fact that the sun could rapidly present a serious gamble could cause complete interruption and fiasco for everybody in the world. As you will find, the sun's allure field is made by the development of electrically charged gases in its interior, a cycle known as the sunlight-based dynamo. Over the long haul, this engaging field turns out to be progressively brilliant and reshaped because of the sun's change and convective changes. At last, this cycle prompts a complete inversion of the attractive posts. The north attractive pole changes into the south attractive pole, as well as the other way around. So, might we at some point dissect the entire cycle and investigate the sun? The sun is made primarily out of hydrogen and helium as plasma, a condition of issue where electrons are not bound to particles, resulting in a combination of free electrons and particles. The sun's inside is partitioned into several layers, with the middle at the center encased by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The middle is the sun's most significant region where atomic combination happens, changing over hydrogen into helium and delivering huge measures of energy. Over the center lies the radiative zone, where energy is moved outward through radiation. In this space, energy moves gradually outward as photons are absorbed and re-emitted by the sun-based plasma. The external layer of the sun's inside is the convective zone, where energy is shipped by convection. Hot plasma ascends toward the surface, cools, and sinks again, making convective flows. The sun-oriented dynamo process works essentially in the convective zone and the T-line, a thin layer that lies between the radiative zone and the convective zone. The T-line is critical since it's where the sun's differential pivot and shear streams assume a fundamental part in making the attractive field. Now, here's something intriguing that you likely haven't heard. The sun doesn't pivot as a solid body. Rather, various pieces of the sun turn at different rates, with the equator turning quicker than the poles, a peculiarity known as differential revolution. This differential pivot stretches and winds the attractive field lines, extending the attractive field. The sunlight-based cycle is a roughly 11-year cycle during which the sun's attractive field goes through a progression of changes, culminating in an inversion of its posts. This cycle is driven by the sun-oriented dynamo and includes several phases. At the start of the sunlight-based cycle, the sun is in a state known as sunlight-based least, described by a low number of sunspots and negligible sunlight-based action. The attractive field is bi and large basic and bipolar, with an unmistakable north and south attractive post. As the cycle advances, the quantity of sunspots builds. Sunspots are locales of extreme attractive movement and are related to the rise of attractive movement from the sun's inside. These sunspots show up two by two with inverse attractive polarities and relocate toward the equator over time. Around the midpoint of the sunlight-based cycle, the sun arrives at sunlight-based maximum, a time of pinnacle action with the best number of sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass discharges, CMEs. The attractive field turns out to be incredibly perplexing and tangled due to the persistent winding and shearing by differential pivot and convection. As the solar maximum blurs, the attractive field begins to reconfigure itself. The reshaped and tangled attractive field lines reconnect, and the worldwide attractive field continuously switches its extremity. The north attractive pole becomes the south attractive pole, as well as the other way around. This cycle is worked with by the development and rebuilding of sun-powered plasma development locales. After the post-inversion, the sun enters a time of declining movement, returning to solar minimum. In the end, the attractive field reconfigures, and the cycle is prepared to begin anew. At present, we're in the solar maximum stage, and the sun's attractive field is going to flip. During this stage, we can hope to see some action from the sun that could be as risky as it is enrapturing. Anyway, the sun's attractive field inversion isn't a startling flip, however. It is instead a ceaseless cycle. As the sunlight-based cycle propels, the sun's attractive field undergoes a progression of changes. At the moment, the attractive field is at its most wound and tangled state. It comes to a tipping point and starts to redesign itself, bringing about a flip. So, do we know when the sun's attractive field will flip? 
researchers screen the sun's attractive movement utilizing different instruments and procedures. Observatories furnished with strong telescopes, both on the planet and in space, give nitty-gritty pictures of the sun's surface and its sunspots. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory measure the sun's attractive field and its progressions over time. One critical mark of an approaching attractive inversion is the way of behaving of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots show up more oftentimes and become more articulated as they push toward the sun's equator, a sign that the attractive field is turning out to be more unsteady and is getting ready to flip. While we're on the subject, we should delve somewhat deeper into sunspots. When the sun's attractive field lines become turned and tangled due to differential revolution, the sun's equator turns quicker than its poles, causing the attractive lines to stretch and twist. At the point when these lines circle over the sun's surface, they stifle the convective development of sweltering plasma from the sun's inside, bringing about the cooler, hazier patches we find in sunspot pictures. Sunspots are not just intriguing sunlight-based includes. They can sometimes create strong solar flares and coronal mass discharges, CMEs. These peculiarities discharge immense measures of energy and charged particles into space. When coordinated toward Earth, they can upset satellite correspondences, influence power networks, and present dangers to space travelers in space. Additionally, increased solar activity can enhance auroras, but it can also raise radiation levels in Earth's upper atmosphere. So, while we're on the subject, we should inspect the distinction between solar flares and coronal mass discharges, CMEs. While both are enormous eruptions of energy from the sun, they contrast altogether. Solar flares are abrupt, extreme explosions of radiation brought about by the arrival of attractive energy related to sunspots. They discharge a colossal amount of energy and light, frequently as X-rays and ultraviolet radiation. Consider them explosions of brilliant light and intensity on the sun's surface, like a huge blast. In contrast, CMEs are gigantic arrivals of solar wind and attractive fields from the solar corona. They can be considered monster air pockets of gas and attractive fields being removed into space. When a coronal mass launch happens, it sends billions of lots of sunlight-based particles into space at incredibly high rates. So, while solar flares and CMEs are connected, they are not the same. A solar flare can happen freely, but at times, an especially strong solar flare can be joined by a CME, albeit a solar flare doesn't necessarily cause a CME. They can be connected in terms of risk. Solar flares can disturb radio interchanges, navigation signals, and represent a huge gamble to space travelers in space due to the extraordinary radiation. Anyway, CMEs can have a more extensive effect. CMEs can cause geomagnetic storms that disturb power networks, satellite activities, and navigation frameworks. They can likewise enhance auroras but present serious dangers to Earth's innovation and foundation. Another thought is that during seasons of high solar activity, the sum of high radiation arriving at Earth also increments. Satellites and other space vehicles are particularly powerless against raised solar movement. The charged particles from the sun can harm electronic parts, upset correspondence signals, and even adjust satellite circles. Past hurting innovation and foundation, what else can happen to the planet? While the sun's attractive field inversion doesn't straightforwardly influence Earth's climate, the related changes in sunlight-based movement can have an impact. A few examinations propose that varieties in solar radiation can impact climatic circumstances and weather conditions. For instance, expanded solar activity can prompt a slight warming of Earth's air, possibly energizing existing climate change. Could auroras be the only positive perspective we experience here on Earth? Maybe one of the most striking impacts of expanded solar activity is the improvement of these terrific lights. These regular light shows, known as the northern and southern lights, happen when charged particles from the sun collaborate with Earth's attractive field and environment. We frequently find out about the aurora borealis, but these lights can additionally be seen around the South Pole. During seasons of high solar activity, auroras become more regular and can be noticeable at lower latitudes, offering emotional night shows. However, other than the delightful auroras, there are likewise additional unsettling parts of the sun's attractive inversion that could happen, assuming we are ill-equipped. 
One of the essential dangers related to an attractive field inversion is the improved probability of geomagnetic storms. These tempests happen at the point when solar wind overloaded with charged particles connects with Earth's attractive field. In outrageous cases, they can cause far and wide power outages and harm picture frameworks. One such occasion happened on the morning of September 1, 1859. Astronomer Richard Carrington was noticing the sun through his telescope, as he had done often previously. However, what he saw on this specific day would hang out in history as the first recorded solar storm. At 11.18 a.m., Carrington saw a brilliant flare of white light exuding from a gathering of sunspots. This occasion, now known as the Carrington Occasion, denoted the start of the biggest geomagnetic storm at any point recorded. The white light Carrington saw was a huge solar flare, an extreme explosion of radiation brought about by the arrival of attractive energy put away in the sun's climate. This flare was so strong that it set off an enormous coronal mass discharge, CME, coordinated towards Earth. The CME arrived at Earth in only 17.6 hours a strikingly brief time frame considering the sun is 93 million miles away. When the CME hit Earth's magnetosphere, it set off an incredibly impressive geomagnetic storm. The effect was fast and far-reaching, upsetting Earth's attractive field and actuating flows in the ground. Moreover, transmit lines, which were the foundation of worldwide correspondence at the time, experienced extreme unsettling influences. Sparks flew from transmit machines, administrators got electric shocks, and some message stations even burst into blazes. The initiated flows were such a strong extent that operators could send and get messages, indeed, even subsequent to disengaging their batteries. One of the most striking and perceptible impacts of the Carrington occasion was the splendid showcase of auroras. The auroras were so splendid and broad that they were apparent a long way past the run of the mill polar areas. Individuals as far south as the Caribbean, Mexico, and Hawaii reported seeing the sky illuminated with lively colors. The auroras were intense to such an extent that they illuminated the night sky, permitting individuals in the northeastern U.S. to peruse papers by their light. In the Rocky Mountains, gold excavators were allegedly stirred by the brilliance, mixing it up for dawn and starting to get ready breakfast. Individuals depicted the sky as having gleaming red, green, and purple shades moving and shining across the horizon. Presently, envision if a solar tempest of the size of the Carrington occasion were to hit Earth today. The results would be devastating. The sun is going through a gigantic change, the reversal of its attractive field, an interaction that happens generally like clockwork as part of the sunlight-based cycle. This occasion, driven by the sunlight-based dynamo, could have expansive ramifications for Earth, possibly causing interruption and calamity. The sun's attractive field is produced by the development of electrically charged gases in its inside, making a complex attractive field that ultimately switches its extremity. The sun is principally made of hydrogen and helium plasma, with energy delivered by atomic combination in its center. This energy is moved outward through the radiative zone and afterward by convection in the external layers. The sun-oriented dynamo framework, which works in the convective zone and the T-line, produces the sun's attractive field. Differential revolution of the sun, where the equator turns quicker than the poles, stretches and intensifies the attractive field lines, driving the sunlight-based cycle. At present, the sun is in the solar maximum stage, where sunspots and sunlight-based movement are at their peak, possibly causing risks like solar flares and CMEs that can disturb satellite interchanges, power frameworks, and present dangers to space travelers. Researchers screen the sun's attractive action and sunspot conduct to anticipate when attractive field inversions will happen. Sunspots, which result from tangled attractive lines, can create solar flares and CMEs, both monstrous arrivals of energy that influence Earth in different ways. While solar flares emanate radiation, CMEs launch tremendous measures of solar particles into space. These peculiarities can enhance auroras but also present critical dangers to Earth's innovation and framework. The sun's way of behaving is an intriguing exchange of material science and regular peculiarities, influencing not just our sunlight-based framework but additionally life on Earth. Understanding the intricacies of sunlight-based movement is urgent, particularly as we keep on depending on innovation that can be influenced by sunlight-based occasions.
The sun produces energy through nuclear fusion, changing over hydrogen into helium and delivering tremendous measures of energy in the process. This energy ventures through the various layers of the sun, in the long run arriving at the surface and transmitting into space. Solar activity can manifest in many structures, including sunspots, solar flares, and coronal mass discharges. Sunspots are cooler regions on the sun's surface brought about by attractive movement, showing up as dim spots. These changes in sunlight-based activity follow an around 11-year cycle known as the sunlight-based cycle, where times of high activity, solar maximum, are trailed by calmer periods, solar minimum. During solar maximum, the quantity of sunspots increments, prompting more regular solar flares and CMEs. Solar flares are unexpected eruptions of energy that release radiation across the electromagnetic range, including X-rays and ultraviolet light. These extraordinary eruptions can influence radio interchanges and pose dangers to space travelers in space. CMEs, on the other hand, are colossal emissions of solar wind and attractive fields that arise from the solar corona and are released into space when directed toward Earth. These launches can cause geomagnetic storms that disturb the planet's attractive field, prompting delightful auroras but also possible interferences to innovation. The impacts of sunlight-based movement reach out past space. They impact Earth's environment and surface. Studies propose that varieties in solar radiation can influence climate designs, possibly adding to weather peculiarities. Expanded solar activity can likewise lead to climatic warming, which is a significant consider conversations about environmental change. Moreover, the potential for innovative interruption because of solar storms can't be downplayed. A serious geomagnetic storm could harm electrical grids, disturb satellite tasks, and influence navigation frameworks. Planning for such occasions includes monitoring solar movement and developing procedures to mitigate their effect on infrastructure. Scientists continue to concentrate on the sun's attractive field and its cycles to better foresee when huge solar occasions may happen. This examination includes a blend of ground-based and space-based observatories that track sunspots, measure attractive fields, and examine solar wind. With progressing innovation, our capacity to anticipate solar movement further improves, which is fundamental for safeguarding our innovative framework and guaranteeing the security of space travelers as we investigate space. As we concentrate on the sun, its influence on Earth turns out to be progressively clear, from the dazzling showcases of auroras to the likely difficulties presented by solar storms. The sun remains a strong power in our nearby planet group. Grasping its cycles and behaviors not only advances our insight into space science, but also enhances our readiness for the effects of sunlight-based movement on modern life.